Welcome back to this NPTEL course on game theory. In the previous session, we have discussed bimatrix games and the Nash equilibrium existence of Nash equilibrium and also a nonlinear programming method. Now, in this session, we would like to point out that there is an intuitive way of solving certain games. So, this method is known as solving by dominance, which in fact we have seen this already in the context of zero sum games. So, we will do this for the bimatrix games now and uh, in particular we introduce what is called iterated elimination. Let us look at this. We start with a simple game. We are looking at a simple bimatrix game where the payoffs are given by So, let us understand these as the payoffs of the players. This is C D, C D and this is for player 2, player 1. So, if we really observe player 1 by playing C, he will get either 2 or 0, but if he plays D, he is getting 3 or 1. In which case, irrespective of the player 2 strategy, by playing D, player 1 is getting higher pay than the corresponding payoffs this thing. So, therefore, D is here strictly dominating C, D strictly dominates C. In fact, in a symmetric fashion for player 2 also, D strictly dominates C. So, therefore, because the, the players are maximizing their utility, no one would like to play C because D is a better strategy for them. So, therefore, both of them will play D and hence D D is going to be the equilibrium in this game. So, this is known as the solving the games by dominance. So, let me formally define this thing. So, it is we consider a game G. So, let us basically it has a S1, S2, these are the payoff uh, strategy spaces and then corresponding payoff functions are pi 1, pi 2. Okay. So, let us take for player i, so let us take S i prime S i double prime in S i. Let us take two strategies. We say that S i prime strictly dominates S i double prime if and only if his utility when he is playing S i prime irrespective of what other player plays. So, S minus i is let us say what the other player is playing is this is strictly bigger than u i of S i double prime S minus i. Okay. So, when whatever player 2 plays that is given by S minus i basically S minus i is a strategy in S minus i. In fact, uh, the notation here is that when I say minus i means except i. So, if i is equals to 1 minus i becomes 2, if i is equals to 2 minus i becomes 1 that is the understanding here. So, whatever strategy the play other player plays S minus i, S i prime yields strictly higher payoff than S i double prime. Then I say that S i prime strictly dominates S i double prime and in fact S i double prime is dominated by S i prime. So, this is the definition of a strict dominance. Okay. So, now let us look at it uh, some simple uh, games. So, let us look at uh, the following game. So, we take uh, 
फोर थ्री फाइव वन सिक्स टू टू वन एट फोर थ्री सिक्स फाइव नाइन नाइन सिक्स टू एट कैन वी सॉल्व दिस गेम बाय डोमिनेंस लेट्स सो if we really look at it the player 1 he is getting 4 5 6 and in the uh, for in the u strategy when they play the row u if they play row m 2 8 3 3 and row d means 5 9 2 2 we cannot say that for example the row u is dominated by row m or row u strictly dominates row m none of these things we can say here okay so but let us look at the other side what about the player 2 from a player per two perspective if you look at it for example here there is 1 4 6 okay so he is the player 1 is getting 1 4 6 when he plays the center column and what about this uh, rightmost column if he plays 2 6 8 so by playing r he is strictly getting a higher payoff than the center column so therefore in fact for player 2 r strictly dominates c so so player 2 will never play c so let us mark this as a mark this with red here saying that he is never playing this one now what we have here is now a player 2 will either play l or r now player 1 uh, has all this umd okay now let us look at it what about the whether uh, the column l and column r 3 1 9 and 2 6 8 no one dominates the other so that we cannot say anything but let's look at the player one's perspective now okay now player one if he plays u he will get either 4 or 6 in comparison with m where he gets 2 and 3 so 2 and 3 is certainly smaller than what he is getting when he plays u so therefore he will m is strictly dominated by u so he will never play m so therefore let me mark this also then what else do we have so player 1 has u and d that is 4 and 6 and compared to 5 and 2 nothing dominates the other whereas player two if you look at it he has the two columns l and r where he is getting 3 9 and 2 8 3 9 is certainly higher than 2 and 8 therefore player 2 will never play r so i can remove this one also so when you remove this r also player 1 has is now forced to play only l so now player 1 has two choices u and d when when he plays u he will get 4 when he plays d he will get 5 so he will naturally play d so therefore this is going to be the equilibrium here okay so this is known as iterated elimination of strictly dominant strategies okay this is iterated elimination of strictly dominant dominated strategies so when a strategy is strictly dominated by another strategy you don't play with that and 
if you keep on going on eventually if it leads to a solution then that is going to be a Nash equilibrium. In fact, we can state it as a theorem here if iterated elimination of strictly dominated strategies leads to a single pair of strategies then this single pair is Nash equilibrium. So, the proof if you really look at it proof is straightforward from the very definition. So, the, the strategy every time when you are removing it, it is dominated by something. So, therefore, that strategy if you look uh, every time whatever you are removing it both of them uh, they have a better strategy. So, they are playing with that and so therefore, eventually it leads to this equilibrium. The proof is uh, not really difficult. So, let us uh, try to prove this fact. Suppose, uh, the way we prove is we prove by contradiction. Okay. Suppose, let us say iterated elimination let us say lead to x star and y star. So, let us assume this one and we need to show that x star y star is equilibrium. Suppose x star is not best response to y star. Okay. So, then let us consider the set x to be all x in S1 such that the pi 1 of x y star greater than pi 1 of x star y. Okay, so this is y star. So, this is basically this set because x star is not best response to y star. So, there must be some x for which pi 1 x y star must be bigger. So, that is this thing therefore, this set is non empty. Okay. So, this non emptiness uh, it come, it, this set is essentially the best response of uh, y star. It is not really best response, better response I can say. Uh, what are all the strategies x which give you better value than x star against y star. Okay. So, this x is non-empty. Okay. So, the thing is that all the strategies in x must have been eliminated. Okay. So, all these strategies must have been certainly eliminated from this x because iterated elimination led to x star and y star that is the this thing. Let us look at the last stage. Look at last stage where a strategy x in x is eliminated. So, look at what we are saying that you are taking some x in x and then when this x is eliminated that uh, last place where it is eliminated that is what we are looking at it. So, for this for x to be eliminated there must be 
some x prime in let me put it s1 okay such that x prime dominates x so this should have happened therefore what we have is that pi 1 of this x prime y star is bigger than pi 1 of x y star but this is bigger than pi 1 of x star y star. So that means what we are saying is that even x star is dominated by x prime. So this contradicts the fact that x star is the eventual strategy that remained after the elimin iterated elimination. So this particular thing is saying that x prime is giving higher payoff than corresponding to x star for the player 1, but that cannot happen. That means it is dominating even this thing. So this contradicts this uh, argument and which even which proves that the strategy pair x star y star is Nash equilibrium. Okay. Now there are some interesting uh, facts here. So when you are looking at iterated elimination, it always leads to a unique solution. It, it cannot lead to multiple solutions. Okay. So these are all some facts that which we can easily verify. In fact, if we go through the proof that it will be evident from there as well. Okay. So uh, but there is one more uh, aspect of uh, iterated elimination. So what we have seen so far is about the strictly dominant solution. There is another thing called weakly dominant solution, weakly dominant strategies. Let me introduce them. So what we say that for a player S prime is weakly dominated by S yes, double prime for player i. If what we need is pi i S prime S yes, minus i is less than or equals to pi i S yes, double prime S yes, minus i this should be true for all s minus i and there must exist at least one s minus i where this inequality is, is strict. Okay. So what I am saying is that if uh, if it is never uh, strict, that means you are getting the same payoffs in this thing. That means the corresponding rows or columns they are identical. So we are just avoiding that. So, uh, for example, if you take from the player one's perspective, the one row, all the entries of that row are less than or equal to another row, but one of the entry must be bigger, strictly bigger. So then we are calling weakly dominant. Now, what about What about iterated elimination of weakly dominant strategies? So the interesting fact here is that when you are looking at the iterated elimination of a weakly dominant solutions, we may not end up getting a Nash equilibrium. So this need not this need not lead to Nash equilibrium. So let us uh, look one simple example. So 
look at this 1 1 0 0 3 2 2 2 0 0 1 1. So, let us look at this example what is going to happen here. So, uh, let me call this as L R, this is T, this is M B. So, M dominates T, in this case M dominates T, here 1 you are getting 3, 0 and 2. So, therefore, this 1 is dominated by this thing. Okay. So, therefore, uh, this we do not need to consider here. Therefore, now what we have is that 3, 2, 0, 0, 1, 1, this is going to be the this thing. Now, for example, we can always say, okay. so for example, here is an interesting situation where now what remains here is that 3, 2, 2, 2, 0, 0, 1, 1. Okay. Now, this is the game that remain now. Okay. Now, in this case what we have this is M B L R. Okay. So, for a player 2 he is getting let us say this is a L if he removes L. Okay, because he R is weakly dominates L. So, he can say that uh, he does not want to play this. Then player in the next round player uh, 1 will choose M. So, therefore, M R comes. Is M R Nash equilibrium. So, of course, uh, I look at this one. If, for example, player uh, two fixes R, the player uh, one is best to play M. And when player plays M, what is the best to player uh, two? He can play either of them. So, is M R is a Nash equilibrium here MR is going to be a Nash equilibrium here. Now, but there is another uh, interesting uh, point here to see is that uh, even ML is also Nash equilibrium. Okay. So, what is really happening here? So, if you observe this procedure the order in which you are eliminating the strategies matters a lot which equilibrium you are arriving at. So, this is not really an example to show that weak iterated elimination of weak dominant strategies does not lead to Nash equilibrium, but it, it, it this is an example which shows that the order in which you are eliminating the strategies is a very very important which equilibrium you are getting and other things. So, this is a in that sense it is a very interesting example and in fact uh, here I would like everyone to ask to construct an example where the iterated elimination need not lead to a Nash equilibrium. So, this I would like people to try this one. Before uh, concluding this session I would like to point out a few points about this iterated elimination. So, this iterated elimination when you are uh, looking at a strict dominant strategy it is it always leads to a Nash equilibrium. The order in which you are using you are eliminating that may give different equilibrium. Now, even though we have uh, seen it only for a fig pure strategies the same argument can be applied to mixed strategies which I will leave it to you to figure out. Uh, you can study the same argument and if, if at all alliterated elimination leads to some solution that will give you a Nash equilibrium, but not in the weak dominance for which I ask everyone of you to come up with an example. And 
this method does not apply to all sort of games, there are uh, most games cannot be solved by this dominant. So, for that we require a other kind of algorithms. The one algorithm that we have seen already in the previous class is nonlinear programming and the other algorithm that we are going to see it in the next uh, set of lectures which is known as a Lemke-Hausen which is more of a combinatorial argument. In fact, this Lemke-Hausen algorithm also proves the existence of a Nash equilibrium using fairly simple arguments, no fixed point argument required. Okay, with this I will stop this session, we will continue in the next session.